What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Try Time Podcast, episode 45. I'm Matt, and I am once again joined by the Gile. It's back. One week off, and it's back, baby. I am Callum, obviously. No, you're not. You're just a Gile I'm guy now. Gile. That is your new name. If I were a dance... Tony the Gile, Gigo, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> would that be, if I were a darts player, would I be the, G, the Gile? I mean, it doesn't have the same ring as Luke the Nuke, but... No. I mean, yeah, go for the it. The goose. Mm, I don't know. I think the gilet is more accurate. Yeah. You could swap that out for an off-brand gilet and no one would notice. So I'll try that next week. Well, no one will notice if you get a real Canada goose one as well. Well, this is a real Canada goose. <laughs> Who's authenticated it? Um, me. I bought it from the real Canada goose shop. You got it from a pub. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not right. <laughs> You got it was from a lucky lucky man in toilets at a pub. We all no, know it. It really wasn't. <laughs> Would you like to give the Gilet story? Uh someone left it in a pub I worked at whilst I was at uni. Um I was like, it's a nice Gilet. Manager said if it's still there in three weeks and no one's come back for it, you can have it. No one came back for it. And the podcast Gilet was born. No, it was meant to be, honestly. Uh so here we are. Gilet's on. And what are we actually talking about today other than my gilet? Well, Which gets talk, mentioned on every single podcast, I think. It wasn't mentioned last week because it wasn't here. No, well, well, it wasn't on, put it that way. Well, yeah, and it was about two chairs down the room, <laughs> but other than that, it wasn't here. Um, All right, go on. So today, Super League on TV. And generally what this means for the wider world of Rugby League's coverage. Now, it's going to come out last week that Super League have signed a new free-to-air TV deal with BBC, which will cover, I think, is it 12 matches a season alongside the regular Challenge Cup programming. I guess let's start with that before we look at some more specific details of what's come out from the announcement. Good for the Rugby League? Yeah. Should we first veto this as well, saying that we are recording this on the 9th? Where I feel like by the time this comes out on the seventeenth, there could be some new additions to the story. So if there's that any, is a good if, point. This was announced what today or yesterday. I can't remember when we're recording. But if something else has come out, so some of this information might just be a little bit off. It shouldn't be, hopefully, unless something groundbreaking comes out. But that's just yeah. To, to, so people don't think we're idiots, which we are. But. Yeah, we've got but we've yeah. got to disguise that a little bit. I think more rugby league on free to air telly is good. Do I think that Channel Four coverage is generally better than BBC? Yes. yes. But do I also like the fact that the BBC, which are the biggest, are, are, are massive as a thing? Well, it means, it, it means there's probably something worth paying a TV licence yeah, for. They're, they're obviously, they're in, the fact that they're interested, it can only be a good thing. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I'd like to see from the BBC this go alongside something wider. Let's get Men's Super League tied down. Let's then look at the women's and the wheelchair gear and really give this accessibility, inclusivity platform that the BBC love. They are on one of the biggest political correct crusades we have ever seen from an organisation. Yeah. Well, we might as well cash in on that, haven't we, in some way, shape or form. I mean, everyone else is. Look at women's football. You can't move from it now. Ten years ago, you... You'd have, seen, you'd have had that on BBC Three and no one would have bothered turning channel over. It was shoved on back ass channels that nobody watched at until the 14-year-olds got annoyed that Family Guy went on. Now it's prime time position on BBC One. The explosion is crazy. Am I saying that, you know, in five years' time we're going to be watching every single Super League game on BBC? No, let's be realistic. I don't think that's necessarily good because you, you also need a big deal like a Sky deal. I know it's not necessarily big at the minute, but no, you need but you that need to that. thrive. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But it's certainly good. My reservations are probably more on the fact it's 12 matches a season. Because Channel 4's biggest problem, well, I think there were two big problems with Channel 4. Number one, their advertisement coverage for when they were actually showing games was appalling. Yeah. I, you know, we are quite big in the rugby league community in terms of we tend to see a lot of the stuff that comes out. I could regularly go on TV, I think, oh, rugby's on four and started two hours ago. Didn't even know about that. I've already missed yeah. first hour at a game. And you're not bothered about that. 
yeah, at that point, I'm not going to go watch the last 20 minutes of a game that I've just seen score on my phone or five minutes earlier and not realising it were on telly. Whereas, whereas you know, and I think this is an important thing I wanted to come on to as well, you know with Sky, like if, when there's a game Thursday, Friday, sometimes I'll be, you know, you could be having a crap day at work on Thursday, like, can't wait to just get on and put, there's going to be some rugby on tonight. And you kind of have that, you know it's on. Yeah. You know it's on on Thursday. And you've got that routine. That regular it's on Thursday, slot. It's on a Friday. And you're like, yeah, it's, it's really consistent. And if maybe, even if it won every week, if it were every two weeks or... Yeah, just a bit more of a consistent yeah. schedule. Because that's exactly what I was just going to touch on with Channel yeah. 4. Not only was the pre-game advertisements crap, you, you had to write a random spell where it was on for two or three weeks. And then it would go missing for four months. So if you're a neutral, that's kind of think, oh, it was quite good last week. I'll put it on this week. Oh, who's on next week? Nobody. You don't see it again for three months. You've forgotten yeah. what's going on by the time it comes round again. Or you don't even know it's on because they've not yeah. bothered to tell you it's on. Whereas no, I kind of feel like the other thing, and this is, I'm going to use every rugby league internet moaner's favourite rant here. If the BBC have financially invested in the sport and are showing it, they are likely to give it more than one sentence on the website. Yeah. Because yeah. they are not going to want to waste money, particularly given how actually BBC Sport has been, probably over the last decade plus, under a lot of pressure in terms of what sports they haven't kept the rights to. Because obviously they've not expanded on the Challenge Cup coverage. In fact, we've seen more Challenge Cup games appear on Sky alongside the BBC. That's yeah. a dilution. Or the early rounds of the Challenge Cup being on... On iPlayer. On iPlayer, yeah. Which the coverage is glorified our league, let's be honest. It's not like proper yeah. BBC coverage. You know, you look at a lot of the other things... We've seen... Okay, this isn't a BBC problem, actually, but we saw obviously the Champions League disappear from free to air Yeah. But that's because the money in it is too big for free to air to be able to yeah. earn the rights. That's why. You've got wider things such as England games that are now popping up on the likes of Channel 4 because this previous exclusivity that BBC and ITV had, they're not paying for anymore. Yeah. And then you've seen other sports disappear altogether. I mean, Formula One's gone from BBC to Channel 4 to exclusively Sky Live events now. Yeah. And that's just one example amongst many. So for the BC to actually spend money on rugby league, which, again, this kind of ties us nicely into looking at a bit more of the finer specifics of the statement here. They've supposedly outbid other broadcasters, yeah. which suggests there is a fee of some sort involved, and hopefully it's not just free pizza, like the I mean, Papa John's or the players on the side of a truck yeah. run by a disturber. But... This sounds weirdly positive. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to turn up to Super League match one of the season. I'm going to wear Jonathan Davis dulcet turn. I'm going to want to turn it off or watch the game on mute. That's the thing. It, the coverage has got to be better. Um, they've got to branch out into different... The know, presenting I'm, staff yeah. need to be better as well. Like, I can't quite believe I'm saying this, considering 10 years ago I cringed at the fact of how little rugby league this person knew. But I almost want Claire Balding back. Someone with the... I don't know, I, I do... I think sometimes... I mean, sometimes you get uh, Mark Chapman on and he's like a big name in the broadcasting and presenting. I've stuff. got it. And if he's doing it, every, I'm happy with him doing no, it. No, sod that, we've oh. got a better idea. BBC... If you pay for us to go to the game, we'll do it for null, and then you can afford to spend more money on the sport. Yeah. Well, I would just... Can I you imagine would, us two dickheads presenting actual live rugby? I was thinking, like, the need... There's the sports crying out for stuff like... Uh, it needs a breath of fresh air. It needs stuff... I would think, even like... I mean, we're going off a Super League, like, 1895 Cup. It needs, when that rounds are on, like, a bit of, like, a match of the day-esque, round up of what's happened, it highlights it, tries... Like, Someone just give us hundred quid and we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Just like we do it. If RFL just give us a bit of money and we'll do it. I mean, yeah. it, to be fair, too came... busy paying Steve Ganson's hush money to leave without <laughs> concluding his investigation. We could actually. I would do it for now. We would do it for now. We? Yeah, exactly. So I don't know what I'm saying, but stuff like that and on the bit like the BBC. If you want us to present a BBC gear like Hull Saints or whatever, just pay our petrol there. Yeah. 
That's all I want. All expensive paid for. Um, well, we don't yeah. need to buy a match ticket if we're yeah. on the media <laughs> staff. We literally just need to get physically to the ground. Get us a parking spot in ground and pay and yeah. just cover petrol costs, and we're there. And food after. Let's not push it. Can I have a fifty pound weather spoon? This is you? this is license, <laughs> people's license fee. Here. Let's not push it. Yeah, I pay my license fee. We both do. I don't have a TV in my house yet, so <laughs> I don't have to yet. Well, it's all right for some minute. And I legitimately do it because you've yeah. seen that. Ta- bloody tax man's coming around now. It can do. There's no fucking screen in it. <laughs> <laughs> He's more than welcome to have a look. Yeah, but but yeah, that's I guess that's the point of how do you think they'll go if they're only having twelve games? They go big on them twelve, and they get like a Chapman in who's who usually you see, but you don't see the whole way through Challenge Cup. He usually comes in around quarter final. Well, I think so. this actually depends what they do because by having the Challenge Cup, this gives them a great chance to almost build the brand even with fewer league games because you've got those gaps where there's cup stuff on the BBC. Yeah, they can tie it all in together, can't they? So this, I just want some new blood on that team. Because I can guarantee you what it's going to be already. We're going to have Jonathan Davies on commentary. With Kia. Yeah. Which I, or I, I, Brian I Noble mind, at a push. I don't mind Kia on commentary. I, do, I don't mind him too. No, I don't mind him there. You're going to have Robbie Hunter Paul running onto the pitch halfway through the game. You've just made a great tackle there. How do you feel? you got to love Robbie Hunter Paul, though, because he just loves rugby league. So I, I love, love the Robbie blow, Hunter-Paul. but for God's sake, can we keep him off the fucking pitch <laughs> mid-game? That's a great warm-up, guys. He's often like, let him warm up. It'll be like the trainer at the of a week when he was like, help, oh, fans were shouting at him for being oh like, my is he going to take a drive because he was just on pitch for that long? Do you know, I, am, I honestly... <laughs> The hundred quid that you've just asked for RFL, any of you players out there who get interviewed by Robbie Hunter Paul, I'll give you the hundred quid if you just drop an F bomb and get that many complaints he's banned from doing it mid game again. It's not Robbie Hunter Paul's fault, man. He gets no, it's asked not. To the fact it. he's told to do that is embarrassing. I do like Robbie Hunter Paul. I like the bloke, but I can't stand him um, doing that. The whole concept of it annoys the hell out of me. But I yeah. Think- Davis needs to go. We need to stop having people running in the pitch midway through the Davis, game. I think Davis, because he's very union oriented, I think there's better out there. But I think even like players who've stepped up and they've done bits of Channel Four or they've done by like I well, think Kyle Lamar was going to be yeah, one of Kyle my next suggestions. Was, but even like I mean, very good on the by player stuff was like or Premier Sports. It's like you yeah, like Kev Brown. Really I think you're going to go across. Leon Price. Well, Price is next sort of on there as well. But I think Kev Brown, yeah, really well spoken. And Leon Price as well. You can have a team of these, but you know I mean, again, go I love the bloke, but I can guarantee as well your punditry team is going to be made up of John Wilkin, Peacock. Jamie Peake, or Jamie Jones Buchanan. Or all three. Who, JJB, I love you. You're a top bloke. We can't fully understand what you're saying on the BBC. <laughs> it's just words at this point because you talk so quick. You need, you need sort of maybe one of them. You need a current player, I think, who plays for a different... You need to be... I think Tomkins has got to be the main person on every single one now. Because Tomkins is the best English spokesperson for the English game. And he's already a good It's player. ironic, isn't it, when you look at what his reputation was at Wigan in his heyday. Yeah. The but most hated man in the league, and now he, he's literally the I face remember of him. Tree, he was a pundit on the for the twenty seventeen World Cup. Obviously he didn't go to that. Yeah, because he was, and he was like at the, time, the disappointment like, around that though. And then to then do it and then Go to the next one and arguably the year before, yeah, be the best player in Super League leading into it, yeah, leading into a World Cup. Like I just think, he's I, great. Think what, I, mean, I think I think what great. we lack at the moment is it's the same face as every time. It needs some fresh blood into it, just so you don't necessarily know what you're going to get before you turn on. It needs personality, I th- though. I was, I was just going to say what it lacks is character, and this is. I like John Wilkin, by the way, and I think he's a good, per- good person okay. on there, but you need Again, someone with him who's going to I'm going to say this. Stop wheeling him out when St. Ellen's are playing, because, my God, it is bloody obvious who we used to play for, and it ain't Toronto. Well, it is, but... Well, it is, but they don't <laughs> exist, so he's not, he's not going on about them every 30 seconds. And you know what? Like it's a- not just him. It's like whenever John Wells got Sniffer Castleford. I don't know if it's because his air matches the kit, but my Christ, did he just not get yeah. out of their backsides? Well, it's like Clark, isn't it, and Wigan? 
against. Yeah. And that, I mean, hiding biases is always hard, but I think just get some people who've, you know, even like a Louis, I imagine someone like a Louis McCarthy scars. I think the problem is, though, and this is a BBC problem, they insist, because of the nature of it, on having the most thoroughly media trained people, which saps the life out of them. The people who are very knowledgeable, like you got looking at like your Peacock showing to kind of Yeah, but Jamie in. Peacock on the train to London for the World Cup semi final looked happy, bubbly, excited to be there. Jamie Peacock on the camera is too busy thinking what he's gotta say that's not gonna get the yeah, Ofcom yeah, involved. Because he's always... He's I feel like he's always one f He's like one sentence away from an f bomb. Well, he was the bloke... Well, when it knocked down to him that player Mike's got removed. Yeah, I think it's like he's... I've been to a few talks of his and it, there are, a lot of them are very... He's quite a colourful character. Yeah. And that's partly what makes him good to listen to. Yeah, because he just says I mean, it's, things. It's like this podcast. I mean, we're prone to dropping some comments. At, well, I am especially... Yeah, oh, we'll say but like crap without you thinking. Yeah, but at the same time, that's, I like to think what makes it that there's real people, this other side of this camera. We're not just advanced AI talking to you through chat GPT. Yeah. This is an actual person who has opinions and... It's about getting... Look at fo- look at football and how that has evolved around the... the Can we please not get any Luca? No, but the I'm team saying. that scores the fewest goals is not going to win the match. Thanks, love. <laughs> you like you are the female Michael Owen of punditry. Yeah. But like, look at like your Mike, people like Michael Richards, Gary Neville, Jamie Carragher, Roy Keane. Like their person, they are now person. You know that is a shout team. because he is an ex Rhinos trialist. Get Big Meeks presented. Well, yeah, get him. Yeah, that actually, he's got the big name. He's got personality. But he's also he's also got the not budget. somebody who's. <laughs> probably going to drop an F-bomb and get off Come on your ass. Well, if we're thinking of play, how many famous people is there who are like rugby league fans? Oh, like Stuart Pearce is yeah, a massive I don't want fan. Wayne Rooney presenting <laughs> it with his bloody Derby County manager beat up. No, no, where's he got sacked from? Birmingham after Birmingham. three. Well, he is unemployed actually, so it does yeah. work. <laughs> no, I'm meaning more people like, even like bloody Thingy from Benidorm. Saints <laughs> Johnny Vega. <laughs> Get Johnny Vegas I mean, honestly, it. right, okay. Let's actually, okay, this is the new side quest of this. Dream BBC presentation line. So what we've got, we've got Johnny Vegas, Micah Richards. But how many people have we got on this? I think we need three. As so well as a, and three as well as a main presenter. So we've got, got them Cha- two. Are we saying, Ch- I think Chapman's a good We'll go chat. Mm. I like Chapman. Right, okay, hang on. There's the BBC, we've got to do some box ticking here. So we need a female on the panel. In some way, right, shape, or now we could do that via th- if we want an actual player involved, Maybe, we could yeah. get a WSL like an Amy Hardcastle or somebody on the panel yeah. because she's very knowledgeable about rugby and she ticks the female box. And I think she she comes across like she's got a bit of a personality as well. Maybe her or some like Caitlin Beavers. Yeah, are we going current player then? We're not going to go for like someone. Who's... The problem is you go older du- women's rugby players. You're going back into the era where it wasn't. It wasn't as much of a. Th- it's like it's like when you look at there's a reason people gravitate more towards your Jill Scotts, your Alex Scotts than you do your Enya Lucas. It's partly yeah. because the more household names. No one's going to talk the same about those guys as they are Alicia Russo, for example. Yeah, and it's yeah, because yeah. this is when it exploded. Yeah, and it kind of comes back to this is part of Sky's problem, isn't it? Because you've got Wells, Clark, etc., just not current names anymore, and they're not good enough broadcasters. Yeah, to be there need, for the presentation skills. You need excite, excitement and players who are like... So McDermott's recently. heading that way. No, not McDermott. Yeah. O'Connor's heading that way as well. Where he's starting to not really be relevant anymore. Yeah, I know what, I know what you mean by that. It's kind Why of do like, I get Barry McDermott confused with him? What the hell I am know. I thinking? I mean, to be honest, both of them are in the similar boat. Great players in the day, probably a bit too far gone from current rugby climate to have relevance yeah. on that front, but also probably not strong enough as core presenters. Yeah. Whereas you look at Gary Lineker, I mean, ITV have had him presenting bloody game shows on primetime Saturday night. Like He can do the camera work to the point it doesn't matter. He's not a current footballing name. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So I think you probably want somebody who's 
last few, you probably want to be going no earlier than like Lois for sale. Right. I think I've got a, a decent set of a, some problems. Are we going with a female player? Well, we need a female somewhere. So if, if we're saying that's no, either player or main presenter. I think, I don't know. And I can, I'm struggling to think of any female presenters who haven't been there and done that. Well, that, like thingy, uh, Emma Jones, who does fire play, very knowledgeable of rugby league. Yeah, very that's cool. a shout. So let's say I'm putting her there. She is the presenter of mine. Okay, that's... Right. So that means you've got a bit more freedom to go for your third. Yeah, one of them. You probably want as an ex-player to go into the my technical ex-player, side. My ex-player with personality, Wayne Godwin. Hmm, that's an interesting shout, actually. You can't. He's got the biggest. He's got personality. personality yeah. yeah, that's not a name I thought. So you axing Robbie? No, Robbie's on pitch. Robbie's not Robbie. Is he Robbie. just staying on pitch? Yeah. He's just involved in game, is he? Yeah, he's, he's got he's got <laughs> camera going into him. He's got a full camera, on. half and half full kit yeah. wanker. Split shirt on half and <laughs> yeah. half scarf round his neck. To keep warm. He's investigating new play of the ball rules. <laughs> Like that were an head eye shot. How'd you do, know, Robbie? <laughs> Clip me round here. <laughs> I can't wait oh. for half time. We regret to call you Robbie Paul will not be available this half. His contract's a <laughs> cauliflower here. <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have him stood in like a, a three man punditry lineup anyway. So I think yeah, like someone like Wayne Godwin. Uh, I think oh. get Comrade Earl on. <laughs> That's what I'll, a player but a current I think Tomkins as well. I think, yeah. And I think someone who's like, then I think you can afford a Wilkin or a Peacock then. Potentially. I was going to say, I'm really struggling to think of any other good female presenters think who are current on rugby. What rap. you want to get is a solid six person team. Yeah. So a couple of them are, a couple of them Or do you bring Helen from. back? Well, maybe, yeah. I mean, it's not like she doesn't work for the BBC. She's blown on Country File. Well, yeah. Oh, well, you'd know that, wouldn't you? Well, it's quite well known that that's what she does <laughs> yeah, with her no, day but, job. I know, but. I mean, yeah, and I guess your cat and thingy like that. So you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to worry about Oracle having a man of the match interview with Richie Myler. <laughs> so, congratulations on player of your and your new wife. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think it's interesting. They've got to get that side of it right. I think if they stick with what they've had, I think it could be. It's not going to yeah. be enthralling to. I think this is the other problem. I do. Like, watch... I'm just going to say, it, Dave Woods as a as lead commentator, amazing. Don't have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. I love Dave Woods. I think he's got the influence. I don't think everyone needs to go. I think there's quite a few good personnel in there. If you're watching this as a neutral that doesn't really know rugby, I don't really get excitement from this crop that we've got now. Yeah. I mean, it says it all. There's more passion out the commentators when they play union and they celebrate making one metre a match. Yeah. Like... Captain Ball. Just taking a drive and not yeah. kicking the bloody thing. <laughs> I mean, I don't get how that's popular. I just don't get yeah. it. I mean, yeah, but we're rare rugby league through and through, though, aren't we, really? I think that's a, that's the big difference. We are, but, league. I mean, I feel like one's easy to understand. I mean, I could watch an entire round of Six Nation give, and I could not describe to you what a mall is. Yeah, it's all subjective. Yeah, that's not the point of this. But we'll save that to the Why We're Here Rugby Union pod. Well, that's a, that, <laughs> we might have to get Harry on for that one. Yeah, well, I think Harry hates everything, doesn't he? Well, I was going to say, he's probably the most... I kid you not, anecdote from our little Try Time podcast brainstorming lives here. It's like, obviously, we're getting towards the end of off-season now. We're kind of seeing what news is out there. Sometimes it's a bit like, right, we've had a bit of a quiet week. What What is there to talk about? I kid you not, his suggestion is, the player we hate the most is, and why is it Harry Newman, was his exact <laughs> message. Well, that's, that's him that I don't hate, Harry Newman. And I'm sure you don't either. No, but I think he's just jealous because he's the lesser Harry in this scenario. Yeah. Albeit if Newman's still got his M&M cut, then I'm, I'm not surprised sure he didn't say it. Chisholm because he beat him at Fortnite. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, he'd say you if he if you beat him at trivia. But yeah, I do yeah, well, but, uh, yeah. So, yeah, Harry is the most negative person we know, I think. Yeah, we're not doing that. So, <laughs> he, I'll tell you, we'll give him a... We'll give him a Let's not give him a Saturday video on why he hates Union, because that would just be an endless bleep. Yeah, I'm not That would that. be a video. We already had to cut half the last Maybe video Maybe we just do out. it. Yeah, I think whenever we have him actually on podcast, I don't think there needs to actually be a... Just don't plug his mic in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty much didn't last time. I, had to we ge- I kid you not, we genuinely had to cut an entire 10-minute section out of the podcast, <laughs> because he just... 
Otherwise, we might have had legal teams involved. Yeah. It's... Harry, you know what you said. We've got distracted again, haven't we? I know. So what? Championship Harry, is TV Harry, deals. Is Harry on your presenter Absolutely lineup? not. <laughs> I'd rather have I'd rather have myself on. I think me Harry. and you would do a good job on commentary. I think we'd do fine. Well, I'll tell you what we will have to do. Bring on the start of Super League season. If Sky is still rolling out the same crap, then we're watching it on mute, and we're going to have to. What fill it in? We're going to have to crack this out and go ourselves. Well, we're going to have to. I think an idea that we've kind of floated around is doing some sort of like if there's a game on telly that we're not going to, and we're kind of you know what doing like a bit of a live watch along of it sort of thing. Which I guess it's nicely right. segues onto whether or not we will be able to do that for the lower leagues because yeah. as we stand right now. There's heavy rumours about Viaplay was Premier Sports, is going to be Premier Sports again. Clearly that rebrand works well. That they are retaking the Championship TV deal up. Which I personally think is a good thing. Yeah. I suppose actually, and you know, this is reminding me of something we didn't touch on on the BBC one. I'm assuming they're going to keep their Monday night slot for the Championship. BBC, Saturday evenings... BBC Two. That's not a bad slot. No, I like that. And and do you know what I have found interesting? We've got a Saturday half five kickoff booked in the calendar against Catalans at the some point yeah. this season. Well, you know, you, how long has this been in the works? But then you know, you're saying about the championship one. What have we got for Arthur? When? What day week are Arthur? Friday first night. Two games. There you go. Wakefield away on a Friday. Then is it? Facts at Facts home, at which home. is good Friday to be fair, so and that might be why it's a Friday, but the Friday... We bit. look, yeah, I think that might be, because do, weren't we looking at neutral stuff and saw Wakefield Featherstone was on a Friday that same day? Yeah, but that is good Friday though. So, so I think that's a right. bank holiday fixture, right, because yeah. they won't do it Easter but Sunday. The third, are they, but then would they compete with Super League and go Friday night? I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think that's a sensible move, but because then do I think, I, I, your core I, rugby fans all have Sky, let's I, be honest. I mean, it was good. We had some good... T- on that, like We went to York on that Monday night and it was a good laugh, wasn't it? Even though it Bulls lost, we went... It was a good laugh. laugh. That being said... It was a nightmare, travel It wasn't a nightmare, but it, it was. It wasn't bad, because obviously we were able to work from home. We got off at a decent time. We had yeah. easy driving access. I do think you go for something like that and you're limited to what games you can show. Yeah. Because really, you wouldn't. I mean, we've not we've not got London this year, so that's one issue off the table. But you're not real. You can never put Toulouse on. No, well, they always play Saturday anyway, so that they were out of the deal. Right, which is fine. Yeah. Unless you then, of course, pick up a Saturday slot, and then you well, can I include think they them. If you got Super League on at five on a Saturday on a Saturday championship night. at three. I'd, I'd argue later, go for a night kick up on a Saturday. I love it. You okay. know how much I love a Saturday night game, by the way. If I, like, I think six o'clock on a Saturday night. My only problem is, well, actually, I guess this depends. What sort of TV audience you attract in? Because you're going to have your younger generation that are probably out at big fellas. Hit the gritty. Yeah, like how? <laughs> I, yeah, I know what you mean, because on a Monday night, there's no one else on is the sport wise generally, apart from if there's like... If you're You've got Monday, Monday night football in the but if, Prem if season. If Rugby League is your main sport, there is no other sport. Yeah, if you don't give a shit about footy or it's the off season over summer. And you'd and rather watch nothing. rugby then, yeah. It, but they'll know the date. They'll have the numbers of how many people watched it and that'll that'll inform whether they do get or is the deal. It, or is it even... Don't change the times. Do we just show one on a Sunday? Maybe, yeah. Just showing them. But then he's a lot of your audience already at the ground on a Sunday. Or are you going... They did it on our league, didn't they? At a point where they did a late, every week they did a late kickoff in Championship. Well, this is kind of five. what I'm. This is, I guess, depends on the thing, and this is where it's a really awkward TV deal. Actually, you're probably not going to get it unless you're supporting a Championship club who's involved. Because I mean, I can't think of anything else Premier Sport have on that. Oh, I will. I don't the get it. Majority of the fan, like a lot of people, I will think tune it's in for La Liga and Scottish football. Well, one of those you might as well go watch your local amateur side. And the other one, if it's not El Clasico, what's the point? Who really wants to yeah. see Osasuna taking on Valladolid on a random Tuesday night? It's not night? something that's going to make you... You're not going to get it yeah. just for that. So you, people who are going to be interested, who want to watch rugby and will pay whatever for rugby, or will have Sky Sports already. Yeah, yeah. Which, if that's the case, and they're supporting Super League teams, you're winning because they're not going to be at a championship ground at 3 o'clock. Yeah, yeah. If you're thinking, oh, it's facts versus 
Dewsbury on this week. I might as well give that a watch. Oh, we're, we're at home, or we're away at Featherstone or somewhere that's, you know, easy to get to. You're probably not going to watch that game. Yeah, yeah. But if you don't support one of those teams and you're in Super League, I am not going to then go and purchase Premier Sports for one championship game a week. Yeah, yeah. When I already pay an extortionate amount of money for Sky. If it should be on Sky, that would be the best way. If Sky just added a bit extra to the deal. Or like even yeah. for so much to come to a partnership like for three quid a month, you can add Premier Sports. Yeah, yeah. Something that's a very sustainable figure. But they're neither going to do that then, are they? No, they're not, because otherwise Sky might as well just take the deal themselves. Maybe then just have, do an hour league deal and you just don't have to Well, I was just going to say, what does this then mean for our league? Or do you focus our league on League One? Because that's yeah. got no talk of a TV deal but and I can't see it getting you, one. If you... But who's going to tune does in it, for it? Does it, it, it? The deal's got to be big enough because does it fuck clubs over if you've got games on telly and on a, people might just not travel? Yeah, which... So does it actually, in turn, hurt the clubs? It's got to work out Well, right. I was going to say, this is potentially where our league gets screwed over because it's, a, it's an RFL is, product, isn't there's it? There's no guarantee. Like, our league could There's no guarantee it works. There's either. no guarantee that... You could literally arrange and pay to do it all and then no one pays for the ticket. Then what you're going to pay is to watch the match. Then you're paying you at a loss. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? Uh, the other problem is... A subscription the fans has guarantee. always... Decide. I know. Why am I paying eighteen quid to go watch watch us play away at? Well, let's pick one of the clubs. Actually, that's a bit of a more of a logistical pain. Cornwall, Midlands. Well, that's League One, but yeah. Yeah, this is what I'm on about. For oh, all right, all right, yeah. Oh, why yeah, am yeah. I going to pay twenty quid to go watch that game there when I could pay ten quid? What's five if it's an early bird stream, and watch it. At home on our league, because what's the worst that happens? It doesn't work, and you get your money back. Yeah. Which, let's face it, that is like a weekly occurrence for our league, which is the other big problem yeah. with it. They've got servers less reliable than the old FIFA ones. I mean, I don't know. If, I don't know if current FIFA ones. Are I don't. I j- I'll be honest. I have no <laughs> idea. I've just don't, I don't play it anymore. I um, gave it up, and it was the happiest decision of my life. Uh, fair enough. But like. Our league is fundamentally flawed. I don't know how it benefits the small clubs. Hopefully the championship will get a deal. Yeah. And who knows, that might be confirmed by the time you're watching this and you've just listened to us chat 20 minutes of shite. And please, for God's sake, BBC, have some fun in your panel. Yeah, hire us. I'd accept that. Julia, not included. (laughs) Yeah, you don't have to buy me a Julia, so we come as a pair. I mean, you need to get a G-Lay, you know. Are you paying for it? Well, I'd pay for this. <laughs> well, if you can find a pub where you can flag one for that's not been cleared for three weeks, go for it. Maybe we need to get as a, That's our first merch. Oh, God, we're not having Try Time Podcast, g <laughs> Well, but anyway, guys, in terms of... I mean, I mean, I think we've pretty much finished on this. I think that so, on that note we're definitely ending it on the uh, G-Lays. But the, the actual if you've actually made it this far then we then you must be a good fan. This so was meant to be the quick pod. Yeah. We, we did the fo- the other thing, we recorded this immediately after last week's 45 minutes of your life we took up. We said oh this will be a quick one there's not as much to discuss here. 35 minutes later we're thinking it's best to wrap up rather yeah. than we've necessarily shut up. Yeah. Well what I was going to say is if you've listened this far then you probably deserve. Like, it's, we want to let you know that we are l- looking at improving stuff. Oh, I was going to say if you've listened this far, you clearly like us. So write to the BBC. Well, yeah. Well, there's <laughs> that as well. Like, if you're listening at this point, you are a, a really like we appreciate you basically. Yeah. But also, we are. Well, so I'll be honest. I appreciate anyone who serves around long enough to count the you, one view on YouTube. Yeah. I'm not fussy. <laughs> but we are looking to make this stuff better we've got guests in the pipeline like it is going to be a mad like really good season yeah like, we've really not got anything signed in writing yet so we won't name drop any names no, but no, no. let's just say what we've got so far could potentially open some very exciting doors over the next, next 12 season. months yeah, this, it's, I mean we were overwhelmed really with the support we've had on the stuff we've put out in the, in the first two months but like it's 
transcended anything that we ever got before in that two months. Well, let's away. be honest, in two months we've achieved more than what we did in two years, which says how shit we were to start yeah, with. Yeah, but we... So we thanks for got, sticking around, original yeah. fans. You've gone through some hell. Yeah, and the quality is now, it's, there's only one way up. We're going to make these podcasts a lot better. We know that... We just need know. to replace him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I... I <laughs> they'll just never go out there because I edit, I edit you can them. still edit them <laughs> oh, well, we're just well. sacking you off camera well the gilet's not staying bad yeah you, know, you can keep <laughs> the gilet no that's, that depends what the alternative is actually I don't want to present with Harry every week no Christ well he'll be pissed every week well we need to introduce you to Michael that's the next job yeah well, the, are we talking cool. to the viewers again yes <laughs> <laughs> well that maybe that's to come in a couple Maybe so. We'll have to get that in pipeline. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, yeah, while you meet more of our podcast team, the ones that you have met so far, we all thank you for sticking around and supporting the channel. We won't waffle on about it too much, but obviously, I'm not even going to pitch you. You've all subscribed. We do appreciate every single one of you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And the listeners as well. Oh, yeah. We Spotify, don't, we, Apple Podcasts, Gang. We don't know how many of you there is. Well, we do. We do. Have well, you do. Number, I yeah. don't. Um, but, but you you, t- you know like there's a consistent number of people who listen every week and I feel sorry for them and we're, we're talking who's about driving to work with this shit on we talk we, we literally talk about the Geely every podcast and like they can't even see it <laughs> I mean to be fair we do plug the fact we're on YouTube so they can come and have a look oh at yeah the I mean you t- and then they'll look at our face and think fuck that I'm sticking yeah. to Spotify see I know you you're a visual podcast you're a what, listener that I'm a visual it, person you're I, an audio I, I, person I like to do it when I'm like in car or something I've listened to it uh, so obviously everyone's different so yeah. thank you for putting us on on your way to work and I'm sorry that your train is delayed this week yeah but I don't know why maybe there's a leaf on the line but I think that's it I think thank you um, yeah I'm, I'm and saying also that, around but... this time we have you'll see on the channel our other videos all of us other videos at this time are all the Super League previews so go check all them out and there'll be a few more to come out as well before start the season so I mean, if Spotify lot, you know how YouTube exists, go check it out. YouTube lot, they probably have stuck around for us talking shit for literally three minutes. It's not even about rugby. They've definitely already watched them. Yeah, because they are like five five to ten minutes, aren't they? Yeah, just stop watching this and go spend the five minutes doing that. It'll be a far more productive use of your life. Yeah, because we're not just chatting shit. We are, they actually are good videos. And look at all the backlog. We've got the backlog. We're waffling now. We're waffling. I'm, oh, yeah. And, and join your waffle and we'll see you next Even time. Even when I... Uh, yeah, bye. <laughs> bye.